Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be taking a look at Zorin OS Lite. This is a system designed for computers that are rather old. Um, and on its website, it, why am I typing in Windows? Um, Zorin OS, there we are. Right, right, perfect. Um, so yeah, it's basically an operating system that is, on the website it says it can uh, run on systems up to 14 years of age, I believe. So, um, rather good, really. I'll give it 4 gigs of RAM, because why not? 20 gigs of storage, because that's fair. Right. Add that on and boot it up. So, um,. It is rather interesting because, I mean, I've been on their website scouring about looking for features and things like that. And um, I found quite a few interesting ones. Um, but I'll read them out at the usual time when it starts to actually install. So I'll just wait for this to boot up. It's come up with the usual Linux boot screen. Well, by Linux boot screen, I mean it's all sort of basic text and... A, very basic dotted boot screen. Um, doesn't usually do this on actual computers, it only ever does it in VMs for some reason. I have a feeling that might be some sort of driver issue. Right, so it hasn't properly, well, properly took this VM's resolution in, but uh, that doesn't matter because we can do that a bit later. Um, I believe it's got an 800 by 600 resolution on at the moment. Not quite sure why it's done that. Let's just go ahead and install Zorin. Third party software, yes. Raise disk and install Zorin. Now the third party software, that's quite good actually because for some reason in Linux, when you install the third party software, especially in a VM, it helps out with things like resolution and sound and all of that. I think it might have um, guest editions included or whatever VirtualBox calls the version of that. I'm having to sort of well, I'll go into a funny position to try to type things onto the t keyboard because I've got a makeshift microphone holder today. Which is sort of irritating, but um, there we are. Right, so that is now copying over the files. Um, so let's just read out the features and the specifications. It needs a 700 megahertz single core processor. It needs 512 megs of RAM. Sorry, pardon. Um, and it needs eight uh, gigabytes of storage and a 640 by 480 resolution. So it's really good, actually, for a system that's been. I believe this was released this year, actually. Um, in fact, it might have been released. Well, I think it was released in April, uh, to 2018. So that's pretty good. Now, um, the main features include obviously Wine and Play on Linux, uh, which are included. Which basically means you can play games on uh, this system and you can run windows.exe files. You can't run all windows.exe files as I've noticed. Uh, for some reason some of them don't run. Um, but it emulates a Windows file system so you can actually have Windows programs on Linux. Uh, which is quite good. And it has a Windows style layout. Um, with a few changes to make it unique, which is good for first time users to Linux. As I said earlier, it can run on computers that are up to 14 years of age, and that will be tested in a future video. Um, and I've got quite a few computers which are quite old, so, well, some which are very old, um, so I'll test them out on those machines later anyway. And it can also be run on newer computers um, to sort of streamline their performance so they're a bit faster with, for example, playing games because I know there are quite a few gamers out there which are um, obsessed with performance. 
which is understandable, I suppose. Um, and like I say, it's Linux-based, which basically means it is very reliable and it's got good security. So, I believe this is the traditional time to say, uh, let's speed up the video and wait for it to install. Alright, so the installation is now complete. Let's just go ahead and restart. Now, I presume that um, the resolution will properly, properly change um, to match this screen. Well, at least I'm hoping anyway. And it's doing the traditional thing that Linux does, which says remove um, the installation medium, even though it's already done it itself. But, yeah. That's tradition for Linux, so... Mm. Yes, probably still do that in about 40 years' time. Okay, so it's now installed. Now let's just take a quick look around. I mean, I have reviewed the other Soren OS... Um, system but yeah this one looks rather interesting as well it's got settings there which is quite good I like this um, almost like a start menu layout and you can just click on something and it takes you to a whole other area change the appearance oh dear for the Zorin OS blue one mm. sort of reminds me of Windows 7 in some respects. Let's open an explorer window, shall we? And no, explorer window, file manager window. Um yeah, I mean that's quite nice and obviously we can change the theme and in theory that will change as well. Oh god, yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to Zorin OS Blue Light, because we all like that. Hopefully. Um, and I believe it's got a software center as well, so just wait for that to load. Um, no, it's quite interesting. I mean, I wonder where that... There's Wine. See, that can be configured. It's even got a virtual C drive. There's Play on Linux as well. Here's the software center. In a way it reminds me of the Ubuntu software center, but it's not... Oh, pardon, I've got hiccups now. Um, but it's not as sort of advanced as the Ubuntu one, because there isn't as many things on the um, opening screen here. Shall we install VLC? Why not? I believe it is connected to a network, so... Hopefully that'll work anyway. Um, and we can snap windows to the side of the screen, or to the bottom, top, or just to the side, which is quite good. Internet, got Chromium, Zorin Web Browser Manager, I wonder what that is. Oh, you can install different web browsers, Firefox, Web, whatever that is. I presume that's... It almost looks like the um, Safari logo, so I presume that's like Safari in some respects. Let's just install Firefox because we like Firefox. Don't know what that is. Um, I presume that's something to do with. Oh, yes. Let's cancel that because that is something to do with Firefox anyway. And make sure we've got an active internet connection. Let's open Chromium. I mean, I don't mind Chromium, but I prefer Firefox. I suppose it's um, Chrome with privacy. Mm. But yeah, I mean, there's not much wrong with Chrome anyway. I suppose um, Chromium is more sort of open source 
and the other ones anyway. Ooh. Okay then. Resume that Firefox there. There it is. And VLC is done. Let's launch that. Basically, I'm just testing its limits now because I'm opening loads of things all at once. And I'm wondering if it's going to crash or whether it's actually going to be able to manage it properly. So that's doing that. Chromium hasn't opened for some reason. Thunar File Manager. Funny name. <laughs> I suppose it does the job. Um, graphics. Oh, we've got LibreOffice on the system as well, which is always quite nice. Games. Linux version of Minesweeper just sitting there. Here's VLC. That is properly loaded. Come on. Continue. There we are. Let's see if that's the latest version. Oh, a few of them have loaded. Let's close one of them. About. And I believe that is the latest version. It's the latest version because it's the version that I haven't actually got on my real machine. And I only checked for updates last month, so it must must be the new version. So I'm still I'm still on like 2.8 or something. Um system it's got a task manager as well. So it is actually quite oh well, it's full of things. Oh here's Chromium finally decided to show itself. Uh, so I believe that that oh here's another one. And there's another one. Any more? I don't think so. Um, oh, no, that's good. I like the start screen that Zara Nice has got. Because, I mean, there's the Ubuntu start screen and then there's this one. This is really quite nice, actually. Quite futuristic. And then you've got, obviously, Twitter, YouTube, Wikipedia. Search. One thing I would have, um, well, I would sort of recommend is that when you type something in and it goes like beyond the actual screen, if it could shrink down as your search gets longer or it, or if it could possibly add another line onto it so it all stays on the same screen, I think that would be nice. Hmm, it's quite good. Uh, shall we go to the YouTube one? Right, so that's all loaded properly, which is good. It means it's got a good internet connection as well. I don't know why Chromium has decided to. Well, it's eating all the RAM as usual. Um, but anyway, so VLC is installed properly. Got a nice file manager, which doesn't appear to be lagging. And yes, it's the Thunar one with the Viking. I have actually tested that file manager out before and it is very rock solid and reliable. Can't really fault that one. Um, and it's installed Firefox just fine with the Zorin web, web browser manager, which is good. Um, and here is an update notifier as well. So that's quite good. Won't bother doing that, seeing as I'm probably going to delete this VM afterwards. But um, I think that is basically about it, really. I mean, I don't know how long this video has run on for now. Yeah, over 20 minutes. Although that will be probably shrunk down by uh, speeding up the install time. Um, I believe that is about it, really, for this video. Um, now, obviously, I will be doing a follow-up video with either one or more laptops um, set up and ready to go with this system, ready to be installed on it. Uh, so we can test out that. Um, well, the system requirements, uh, I'm going to be testing it on a Vista laptop, and if I can find one that works properly, a Windows XP laptop, because I have got a few, but some of them, for some reason, have got problems with showing options on the boot menu, and, well, it's going to be fun to try to troubleshoot, troubleshoot that, uh, but that's a whole different story. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, uh, I'm very happy and you can leave a comment if you want I have put comments on approval because I have been quite a few trolls on my channel uh, recently as you probably already know 
because they've been striking everywhere. So I've put my comments on approval so they can't strike on my channel. Um, now, if you did enjoy this, um, you can support my channel by subscribing to it as this will give me some more motivation to make new videos. And well, that's about it really. Thank you all once again very much for watching and until the next video, goodbye.